Hello and welcome to today's video where I'll be talking about how to hook up a four load cell array and using the HX711 analog to digital, analog to digital converter. So to talk a little bit about these load cells um, to, for starters, uh, basically what these load cells are, are they, they are a strain gauge that's covered in this white goo right here um, and coming out of that is three wires. You have uh, two wires to provide power and ground and one for the sensor reading itself. And basically what a strain gauge is, is it's, um, it's kind of like a potentiometer. It's a grid of wires and when a strain is put on those wires, they either expand or contract. From that expansion or contraction, we can determine some sort of variance and get the, uh, the load put on that because that uh, variance is linear. So we can just take the reading, convert it into some, um, some weight, whether it be grams or ounces or whatever you want, and we can read that value. Uh, the resistance, because this is such a sensitive strain gauge, the resistance changes can be based on um, the actual strain put on it but you can also get variances from the strain based on the ambient temperature in the room and even going as far as the length of these wires that you use to hook them up. So it's important that when you make your circuit, you try to keep the wires all exactly the same length on every, uh, every sensor. Sometimes you'll see larger load sensors that are, um, they're like a large bar and they have four wires coming out and those are set up already in what's called a Wheatstone bridge or a full Wheatstone bridge. And what those usually do is they usually have four sensors in an array, uh, sometimes called a rosette, but sometimes different types of arrays, typically a rosette. But um, those ones don't need to be put into a bridge, into a, a Wheatstone bridge like this with the wiring. They just have the four wires coming right out. You apply the voltage, your excitation voltage, if you will, to uh, the power and ground, and then you just read the two sensor values. So these ones are a little bit more confusing. I wanted to do a video so I can cover this. Um, they have to be set up in this specific order. So in order to create a Wheatstone bridge. So we have the sensors one, two, three, and four. And this one is going to represent our excitation ground. This one over here is our excitation positive. Over here we have our sensor positive, And over here we have our sensor negative. And what we're going to do is we're going to run these up to our HX711 and we're going to plug them into their appropriate wires. Now notice also that I have these two other wires, the power and ground, which we'll just say that the black is ground. Um, so the ground from this upper corner here is tied to this other corner here and then from white, uh, the white wires connect to the here and then a black again and then a white again. So it makes it a little bit confusing because all the sensors coming off are red and two of these are actually sensor values. Two of them are the voltages which are typically black or uh, sorry black and white but in our case they're all going to be red now there is an alternative if you find this confusing um, spark fund does sell what they call a combinator board and it's just a board that has all the pinouts for it and you can just plug it right in and it takes all the confusion out of it for you uh, i believe it also has um, an RJ45 jack so that you can send information over a network cable if you wanted to send information from a, for a long distance. You wouldn't need to create a wire harness that goes at long distance. You can use an existing cable such as an ethernet cable and then you'll be able to have your scale sitting over in, in one room and, and run an ethernet cable over to where your uh, Arduino is running. So if I put this down now that I've here I've used a, a one foot by one foot uh, ceramic tile I actually have another version, which is my production version of a project I'm working on, and that one is actually a 6x6. It's much easier to do with a 6x6, but it depends on what you're weighing, of course. Uh, this one was planning on weighing a large keg, so I wanted a, a large footprint. Uh, the new one is just, just weighing a small carafe, so I only needed the 6x6 inch space. Um, actually, now before I do that, I wanted to just mention one more thing here. Um, these sensors, it's important that you put them on some sort of uh, some sort of support so that the middle piece, because this is what actually flexes, this middle piece needs to have room to flex up and down. If you put this directly on the ceramic plate, 
it's not going to be able to, to bend down. So what I've done is I actually created a little uh, 3D printed square underneath with a, the center square missing. So that, that way this center piece can actually flex and bend inward. All right, and so now here's my circuit. Um, please excuse the uh, the wiring mess up here. I actually took this HX711. I didn't have one on hand, and because of the shipment issues, I'm not able to get a new one, and I didn't want to take these wires out because it's just stolen from another project. Uh, these wires I actually just had hooked up to an LCD screen, but I'll talk about that later um, in a different video. But here you can see my four wires coming up. And all those are doing is they're tied into my breadboard at the appropriate pin. So this first one here is E positive, which is going to be my excitation positive voltage. It's a five volt signal. Uh, e negative, which is just going to be ground. Then we have A negative and A positive, which are the sensor A negative and A positive, which were here and here. On the other side, I have ground and VCC, which are supplied from the Arduino itself. Um, that actually reminds me, on the HX711, this excitation voltage is supplied for you. So you don't actually need to provide the power for these pins. Um, it's provided for you through the circuit board. So the only things you need to provide are, you need to plug these wires in over here on these pins, uh, E positive, E negative, A negative, A positive, and then you need to hook up these four pins, which are the ground, VCC, and then any digital signal or any digital pin for your DT and your SCK signals. Now for mine, I have SCK hooked up to digital two and my DT is hooked up to digital three as you'll see in my code. Um, but I had this little wire harness coming off of this and all I did was put some other wires on it. So that because these were females, I needed to do a male to male wire to create a um, pigtail in order to plug back into my uh, breadboard here. Uh, and then these are just providing power and ground to these rail on the side of the breadboard. So that's that. Um, let's get started on looking at some of the code. All right, so as I mentioned, my D out or DT as it's marked on the breadboard is pin three, and then my SCK is hooked up to D2, or digital pin two, sorry. Um, what I'm using is the onboard, or I'm using a library that I found on GitHub and it seems to work pretty well. Let me see if I can get this. Where do we go? Here it is. So here's the website. If you go to github.com slash, just change this to a slash B-O-G-D-E slash HX711, then that will bring you to the library that I'm using here. And I've included it here. I've defined my load cell DT and SCK pins. I create an object. I do a serial begin just to start up the, um, and actually this is a, most of this is a sample code right from the library. I did edit it slightly, but uh, what I did, so what the code is doing is we're firing up the serial monitor so we can write to the serial monitor. Uh, just some initialization messages. I create uh, the scale begin, which is just telling you the, the pins. And then the gain, I won't get into the gain. We'll just assume that it's going to be 128 because uh, we're not going to use the other gains. This stuff is all for uh, setting up to scale, which I created my own calibrate function, which I'll talk about in a minute. Then after it calibrates, it just gives me a raw reading, an average of 20 readings, and then prints the average of five readings. And that's all because it's doing the scale.read average. And then scale dot, uh, get value because this is printing five readings from the ADC analog to digital converter. That's the HX711 minus the tear weight, which is set with the tear. I'll talk about that in the calibration. And then get units, which is prints the average of five units or uh, prints the average of five readings minus the tear weight divided by the scale parameter with set scale. And again, I'll talk about that also. So then all it's going to do is take a reading every 2000 seconds. Uh, I did comment out this power down, power up. I, I, I haven't done enough testing to find out if there's actually any merit to doing this. Um, I have found that if there is some 
If there is some settling or there's some floating with the sensor values and they're starting to drift, then doing a power down, power up can fix that. Um, there's another analog to digital converter that I've had that uh, that just gave me an error value and then every every reading after that was an error value unless I reset it. So in that case, it was helpful to power it down and power it back up every now and then. But going back to my calibrate, so what I do is I uh, remove any existing calibration by setting the scale with a blank value and I set I tear the weight so that's just going to reset and make it seem like and my scale knows there's nothing on the scale right now. Uh, I added a serial print so that it tells me to add my known weight, which I have right here, which is a 500 gram, um, just solid metal weight. I put in this random user input of negative 123 so that as long as the user doesn't enter something or enters something other than negative 123, then I'll know that somebody had entered something and it will add that. And then what we'll do is we'll take that user input, convert it to an integer so that we can get our uh, input. Now we take a reading from the scale with 10 readings. I take, I say, I tell the user that I'm setting the scale to and then I set, tell it what I'm setting it to, which is the calibration reading divided by the user input. So uh, the user input is the weight of my known weight. And by dividing by the known weight, I get the conversion factor that, it's, that I'm going to need in order to convert this to a known value. Otherwise, I'll just get readings like 60,000. And that doesn't tell me anything. So if I have 60,000 divided by 500, then I know that that is going to be um, the value that I need in order to convert that into, uh, later I can multiply that and convert it back into something that's going to equal grams. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm setting the scale with the calibration reading divided by the user input. So this is just a raw reading, get units. It's not doing anything to the value. It's getting 10 readings, averaging them together, and then I'm dividing that by my known weight to get my conversion factor. All right, so let me run this up and let's see. All right, so I'm going to start my device monitor, which is going to reset my Arduino. It's initializing the scale. Okay, so it's it's done the tear to set, reset everything. It's reset the calibration. Now I put my known weight on here, 500 grams. I type in 500. It's not going to show you what I'm typing. Um, it's just the way that this terminal works. But I'm typing in 500. Hit enter. All right. So here's what I got. It's showing me values that are pretty close to 500 right now. Now I will tell you this is going to likely drift. Um, I've seen it drift up to about 20 grams, which um, is about one ounce if you're using standard or American measurements. Uh, this is surprisingly actually pretty accurate. I haven't seen I haven't seen values this accurate uh, well frankly at all. Usually there's an initial um, I'll get 500 initially and then after about five readings it will start to be drifting about one gram or half a gram every reading. <clears throat> but now if I pull this off Okay, it's averaging about 7.8 grams with nothing on it. So, I mean, that could be uh, some of the fact that I have a little bit of wobble here. So that could be throwing the scale off a little bit. Um, also could be that my conversion factor, when I took 10 readings, the average didn't really average out all that great. Uh, but you can see it's staying pretty, pretty constant at about 8 grams. If I put this back on, 500, pretty accurate. Uh, let's see what happens when I put this 250 gram. Oh, this is 200 gram. Yeah, so it's pretty accurate. I mean, six grams, that's uh, that's like a fifth of an ounce almost. Yeah. 
So that's that's pretty accurate. It's, uh... But again, I've seen fluctuations up to 20 grams. So I wouldn't, if you need something a little more accurate than 20 grams, I wouldn't recommend using this. Um, they do have scales that these are these load cells are meant for fi up to 50 kilograms so you You'd want to get something a lot smaller if you're planning on doing more minute precise measurements with smaller weights You'd want to get something a lot smaller, but this is actually working out pretty well for these small weights And there's very little fluctuation which You know it looks great in the video, but I'm I just want to make it very clear there was fluctuation um, in my preliminary testing, so just know that this can fluctuate up to a gram, or up to, a, sorry, one ounce, or about 20 to 25 grams. But that's all I have for this video. As always, if you think I've missed something, or if you want me to go more into detail on something, then please let me know down in the comments. If you liked the video, or didn't like the video, please let me know, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.